Hello, today I'll show you how to run Keycock on OpenShift as well as deploying a Node.js based service uh, and a HTML5 application uh, and securing these with Keycock running on OpenShift. The first thing we'll do is that we'll log in to OC. Then we'll create a new project. For simplicity, we're going to run all Keycock and the service and the application in the same project, but obviously it's best pr practice to use separate projects for your different applications. Once we've created the project, uh, we need to import the template for Keycock. We do this by importing the uh, template from the GitHub repository. And there we are, we are now ready to get started to deploy Keycock. We now go into our Keycock project and we browse the catalog. We now have Keycock available to deploy. We don't need to change any of these uh, properties. They will all be set to default, but let's set a more meaningful and easy to use administration username and password before we go ahead and create Keycock. Now we can go to the project overview uh, and uh, we can now wait for the pod to spin up. This does take a little while. While waiting, you can drink uh, beer like I'm doing now or make yourself a cup of tea if you're doing this uh, through during office hours. There we go. Now we have Keycock up and running and we can open uh, Keycock with this URL. So at the moment we're using self-signed certificates uh, and obviously the browser doesn't trust these automatically. So we'll have to ignore this warning and carry on. Right, so let's go to the administration console and we'll log in with the username and password that we previously uh, passed into the, uh, the OpenShift when we were creating Geekhook. Okay, so we're going to now create some clients in Keycook for our application and for our service. We're going to start by creating the client for the service. As this is a service, it doesn't need to be able to log in. So we'll select the access type bearer only. This means that the client won't be able to obtain tokens, uh, only verify tokens. Then we need to create a application, uh, a client for the application. We'll call this just app. For best practices, uh, you should set the valid redirect URIs to the exact URIs for the application, as well as the web origin. Uh, for now, we'll just set them to start and we'll go back and we'll configure them to the correct URLs when we know these. Okay. So now we can move on to uh, our deploying our service. We'll first have a little look at the actual service that we're deploying. So this is a very simple Node.js based application that has been secured by the, the Keycloak Node.js adapter. We can see that we have a keycloak.json configuration file. In this configuration file, we specify the realm and we specify the client ID, but we have the auth server URL being injected in from an environment variable. We can quickly look at the application as well um, to see how it secures itself with keycloak. And it's relatively simple to do. Okay, so let's go ahead and deploy this to OpenShift. 
what we'll do is that we're going to use the Node.js source to image uh, template. And we're going to select advanced options and we'll give it a name called service. And then we need to pass in the URL for our GitHub repository. And since I have multiple applications in the same repository for simplicity for the um, demonstration, uh, I need to pass in the context directory as well. I also want to enable a secure root because token-based security, uh, you should always use uh, secure service, secure routes. And I'm going to redirect all insecure traffic to the secure route. So the next thing I'm going to have to do is to pass in the environment variable for the keycock URL, which we looked at before. And I can easily get this from uh, the administration console here. We'll display the URL. Uh, since I opened keycock already, I know where it is. And that is it. I'm now ready to create my Node.js service. So I can continue to the project overview. And we can see now that the source to image is doing its magic and it's building the image for us. And as before, we take a sip of our beer, or during office hours, obviously, a cup of tea. And there we go, we now have our service up and running. And we can open the service on this route. And again, the browser is complaining about the self-signed certificate. So the service is listening for a URL called service, and it has a few different endpoints. It has a public endpoint, which you don't need to be authenticated to invoke. So we can now see the message public, which is a very simple service, and that's all it returns. And we can also do that protected or admin there we go so the admin the access is denied so obviously we need a token to be able to invoke uh, this service uh, this endpoint for the service the next thing we're going to do is that we're going to deploy a very simple application a HTML5 application that then invokes this service so to deploy an HTML application to OpenShift, you need to have a um, you need to have a web container for it. Uh, we're going to use PHP uh, because the nice thing about PHP it also allows us to inject some environment variables into our application to configure it. So we can look at our index.php file. We can see a few things here. So first of all, it has a JavaScript variable that could, uh, called service URL, which injected from a environment variable. This allows us to pass in the URL of the service that we just deployed into this HTML application. We also can see that it's injecting the keyclock URL and it's loading the keyclock JavaScript library directly from keyclock rather than copying it to, to the application. Finally, we also have the Kiko configuration file, which is in this case is a PHP, uh, to allow us to then inject environment variables into the configuration. We can see that we've hard coded the realm name called master, and we also hard coded the client ID, uh, but we allow it to inject the um, Kiko URL from an environment variable. And we can see again how easy it is to secure applications with the Kiko adapters. In this case, obviously the JavaScript adapter, the client-side JavaScript adapter. 
And all you have to do is to declare a new key group job object uh, and then you can initialize this uh, to load it. In this case, we're saying check SSO to make the application automatically log in if you're already logged in. Okay, so let's move on to deploying this application. As I said, we will use the PHP, and of course, again, we're using the source to image uh, approach. We also want to go for the advanced option this time around as well. We'll just call it app, and we have the application deployed in the same repository, but under a different context directory. Again, we want to enable secure root, and we want to redirect insecure traffic. So now we want to declare the service URL. And since we have the service open, we can easily copy and paste the URL for it. We can also find this URL, of course, in the uh, OpenShift Web Console uh, under the uh, services. Then we want to declare the keycock URL. And again, we can copy that directly from the Open Admin Console, as we know the, the URL from there. And now we can create this application. And let's see, there we go. That's currently being built. And again, we'll take a sip of our beer or tea in some cases. And this is taking a little bit longer uh, because I haven't uh, loaded anything into this OpenShift instance. I had a completely clean OpenShift instance. It has to download the images. Right, again, it's complaining about the self-signed certificate and we'll ignore this. I can see that I was already logged in. Uh, that was because I was already logged into the administration console. So let's log out. And now you can see that I'm no longer logged in and I can log in and I'm redirected to Keycloak and I can log in with my admin password that I created before. Now I'm able to invoke the public endpoint and I'm also able to invoke the admin endpoint. However, I'm not able to invoke the secured endpoint and that is because the secured endpoint is uh, being secured with a different role than the admin endpoint. So we can go back to Keycloak and we'll refresh this page because we're already logged in. Uh, and we'll create this role, the user role. And then we also need to give the user uh, this role as well. So we'll go to find the user, we'll go to role mappings and we'll select the user role and we'll add it to the user. So now if I refresh the page, it will then re-authenticate the application and we'll now have both the admin and the user roles. So now we can invoke secured as well as the admin, as well as the public. Now, while we're at it, we can see how easy it is to add additional um, features to your application. So imagine that we want to be able to have a remember me option. All we need to do is to go to the admin console and then we can say remember me and let's allow users to self-register um, and maybe we also want to add an identity provider so let's say we want to add login with github all we need to do is to go and create <coughs> So we need to create a client in GitHub so that we're allowed to log in. Uh, and then we pass in the client ID and the client secret. Uh, I'm not gonna show this in this particular demo. Um, so I'll just pass in some fictitious values here. Okay, so now let's go back to our application and log out and try to log in again. 
And now we can see that we have a remember option and we have a register option and we also are able to log in with GitHub. As you, new users log in, they won't actually get this user role that we created or the admin role uh, because by default, the users will not get any roles. So we can go into the admin console and we can go to the default roles and we can say that all new users should get the user role. So now we'll log out again, we'll log in and then we'll register a new user. And we're now logged in and we can see that we're user Stia. Uh, I'm now able to invoke the public and I'm able to invoke the secured but I won't be able to invoke the admin endpoint. And at the same time, this user won't have access to the admin console, of course. That's it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.